Hey there. It's been a while, huh? Magical. Let's go home, Rico. Okay, job's done. You're free to go now. Suguru, should we kill these guys? Does there really need to be any point to it? Satoru Gojo is the strongest. That's a statement that I don't think anyone would disagree with when speaking about the best of the best in Jujutsu Kaisen. His only rival is Ryoma Sukuna, with Geto being hailed as the strongest in conjunction with Gojo during the hidden inventory slash premature death arc, and I'd argue during the events of Zero. The only other person of note that could match Gojo is possibly Yuto Okotsu being described as second to Gojo. But what if I told you there was someone else? Someone who would fundamentally change Satoru Gojo as a person. Someone who would beat him and in doing so humble him to the extent of changing his entire mindset, his entire worldview, and would be a crucial component not only to Gojo's title as the strongest, but Geto's downfall as well. This person is Toji Fushiguro, who fundamentally changed the status quo of Jujutsu Kaisen forever. So, let's talk about it. But before we get into that, please, if you're new to the channel, I do this kind of analytical content. If you like that, please consider subscribing and ringing that bell, leaving a like on this video. And if you're an old subscriber and you want to take that support another step further, I do have a Patreon or you can opt to become a channel member. If you want some cool anime merch, check out my collaboration with Bloomslank. Use my code RIMGAMET for 10% off. All those links in the description below. And with that out of the way, let's get back into today's video. Before we get to Toji, we need to talk about the hidden inventory slash premature death arc as a whole, which just wrapped up its adaptation in Jujutsu Kaisen's second season at the moment. This arc takes us back to 2006. A simpler time before Sukuna's fingers were eaten by Itadori, before Yuta Okotsu was recruited to Jujutsu High, and before Gojo and Sukuna were duking it out. And what I love is that the anime shows this within its opening. And I usually don't break down openings and endings, but I feel like this arc is a special case. It encapsulates the fun, carefree attitude of these characters in their youths, and it's such a tonal shift from how dark and depressing the first season and JJK Zero could get. It sets the tone going forward, and that cannot be understated. So let's recap. <laughs> Tengen is an immortal recognized as the cornerstone of Jujutsu sorcery. He assigned a task to Gojo and Suguru, two outstanding Jujutsu sorcerers from Jujutsu High, to escort the star plasma vessel Amanai Reiko, a girl who was handpicked as the ideal match to fuse with Tengen. So the two of them embark on their escort mission to keep the balance in check. Nonetheless, an assassin known as Toji Fushiguro intervenes in an attempt to assassinate the star plasma vessel. So with that brief summary out of the way, I can finally talk about how Goju became the strongest sorcerer since Sukuna and how Geto fell down a dark path in the process. And it all starts with Toji Fushiguro. The father of one Megumi Fushiguro. In the world of Jujutsu Kaisen, people like Toji are anomalies, just like Miles Morales in Across the Spider-Verse. Toji should not exist. He possesses the trait of heavenly restriction. Now, heavenly restrictions are characterized as bindings that are placed on the body of a sorcerer following their birth. These bindings typically allude to constraints on the human body in return for greater capabilities in a different function. A heavenly restriction, for example, can cause a sorcerer to be born with minimal cursed energy to be physically gifted, and the inverse is true. A sorcerer can be born with considerable cursed energy and have an extraordinarily weak body. Toji, unlike any other known case, does not have cursed energy. Literally zero. His heavenly restriction entirely eradicates cursed energy from his body. This renders Toji invisible to other Jujutsu sorcerers, allowing him to pass through obstacles undetected or even sneak past the Six Eyes. This increases his unpredictability in battle and prompts others to misjudge him solely on his cursed energy. His incredible physical prowess compensates for his complete lack of cursed energy. 
While some people have received heavenly restrictions that have brought their cursed energy back to normal levels, Toji's the only case where it's totally removed from his body. And in doing so, it has sharpened his skills to the point where all of his five senses are at their peak, on top of the fact that he can freely interact with curses. Toji possesses a cursed spirit that can hold a variety of objects within its body. He can easily swap weapons by inserting and removing them from the curse's mouth. This curse has the ability to shrink within its own body, allowing Toji to eat it and prevent individuals from detecting the curse energy it produces. That said, this alone isn't enough to defeat the likes of Satoru Gojo and Suguru Geto. Regardless of age, Gojo and Geto are formidable opponents in their own right, and if Toji were to take them head on at their peak, he'd most certainly lose. Now, when I say peak, I'm not referring to Gojo right now in the story or even Suguru in Film Zero. Allow me to elaborate. Toji is not only extremely physical capable, but he's also brilliant. He knew who he was up against, the two strongest, one of which possesses the six eyes, an ability that had noticed Toji for the first time in his life. So he had to get creative and taking them on one by one isn't what he had in mind. He still needed to deal with the powerhouse that is Satoru Gojo. So what does he do? Well, to find that answer, we need to look at Reiko Amanai. She is the target, and she's a very valuable target if it wasn't already clear, with the two strongest sorcerers at the time safeguarding her, being so valuable that she'd have a bounty to match that value, something that Toji had partial access to via a deposit he used at his advantage. This is why Toji is brilliant. He took his deposit of 30 million yen and created his own public bounty for Reiko Amanai, luring sorcerers from far and wide to claim said bounty, and in doing so, weaken Gojo. And as we all know, he succeeded. What I love about Reiko's death is the build-up. She fundamentally played a part in changing Gojo as a character as much as Toji did. Gojo went from a person who didn't see the value in protecting people weaker than him to forming a strong bond with Reiko and understanding that weak or strong People are people, and life is just as valuable no matter how strong you are. Going out of his way to make Riku feel as comfortable as possible and have as much fun as possible, because her life would fundamentally change after she became Tengen's new vessel, leaving her whole life and friends aside forever. This is why her death was so pivotal, and the reason why she died is because of Gojo's weakness. If Gojo didn't lose to Toji that day, I'm confident in saying he wouldn't be the sorcerer he is today. And the people under his wing most likely wouldn't be as strong as they are today. Before Toji, Gojo was the strongest at that point, at least with the mainstream is to be considered. And he knows it. He didn't need to train because until Toji, no one could beat him. Gojo was on death's door and that caused him, forced him to learn reverse curse technique in his dying moment. But it was already too late. Gojo's failure to stop Toji fundamentally not only changed him, but Ghetto and the story going forward. I screwed up pretty bad. You're not the one at fault. Because he failed, Reiko Amanai died. And because she died, Ghetto started having doubts due to the people sharing because of her death. They got what they wanted. Gojo's failure got an innocent girl killed before her time, right when she had decided to make up her mind to continue living life as her own person. And that's something he would not forget. After that, we see Gojo push himself to perfect his limitless to the point where it's always active. And to circumvent any lasting damage it could do to his brain, he enhanced his reverse curse technique. But this isn't the only thing that Gojo's failure set in motion, as I said before. Reiko Omni's death also had lasting effects on Suguru Geto. While Gojo seeked betterment for himself, he looked towards the future. Geto spiraled downward, staying in the past, suffering PTSD from the events. You could hear the clapping. No matter where he was, as Gojo grew stronger, Ghetto stayed the same as he continued to spiral due to his loneliness. Huh? Don't make me repeat myself. Suguru killed everyone in the village and- I heard you the first time. That's why I said huh to what you said. Suguru's old home was already an empty husk as well. Though from the bloodstains and residuals, he most likely killed his parents. Why kill he did? Satoru, calm down. 
I don't understand what's going on either. <laughs> Gojo was so focused on his own betterment, not being able to see the change within Ghetto until it was too late. Ghetto's descent into madness mixed with his departure broke Gojo on a fundamental level. The straw that broke the camel's back, though, was his last words to Gojo. Are you the strongest because you're Satoru Gojo? Or are, or are you, you Satoru, Satoru Gojo, Gojo because, because you're the strongest? the strongest? Gojo was very much of similar mind to Ghetto in this instance one year ago. This would make Gojo a hypocrite. Is Gojo's way of thinking right because it's what he believes is right? Or is it only right because no one else could stop him from doing so if he tried? This puts Gojo's identity into question and it shatters him because it's coming from the man who was his moral compass, the only person he viewed as his equal, the only person who could understand the loneliness of the title, the strongest. With Suguru gone, Gojo vowed to cultivate strong allies, people who could surpass him so that no one would ever feel that loneliness he and Ghetto felt. He came to a conclusion that he couldn't save everyone, no matter how strong he had gotten. He also couldn't save people who didn't want to be saved. The least you could do is hit me with some curses thank you all for watching this video i've always wanted to talk about jujutsu kaisen since i first watched the anime back when it came out but i could never find something to pin down until now hopefully this is my last jujutsu kaisen video if you'd like to see more please let me know if you're new here please subscribe and ring that bell leave a like and consider becoming a channel member or joining the patreon this is grim toki this has been beyond animation and i'll see you in the next one peace